Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you're doing well today and thanks for coming back to my channel. This video is about the five things you can do to get the most out of Luminar. I've been using it for a long time now, uh, well over a year since I got the first version and uh, I've been loving Luminar 2018 ever since it came out. So having a lot of fun, but I get a lot of questions uh, about different aspects of Luminar. Now this isn't about specific filters or steps to take, but these are kind of sort of general observations. Uh, that I've sort of come across and things that I've I've done to help me get the most out of Luminar. Wanted to share those with you. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. Okay, so item number one, or the first thing that you can do, and that is to edit raw files or TIFF files. Now, you can look at my photo here. If I click on layers, you can see that this is a .arw file. You can see that right there. That's a raw file shot with a Sony camera. And the reason I think this is important is because raw files have more information, they're bigger, so therefore Luminar is gonna move a little slower. That happens, I don't personally care, but be aware of it. Uh, but the point is, uh, they contain a whole lot more data, and the reason I care about that is you can move pixels around and do things, push pixels further, basically, without having a huge impact on your photo. Now, in the majority of my videos, I use JPEGs because they're small and therefore a little snappier, and I don't want you guys waiting around while something is sort of calculating. Um, with a RAW file, it is going to take longer. However, um, you can push pixels further without getting any pixelization or any kind of artifacts in your images, and that's a big deal because you want clean images. And so that is tip number one, and I highly recommend shooting in RAW and editing in RAW or in a TIFF file. I'll often start in um, Lightroom, where I currently manage my library, and then export a 16-bit TIFF over to Luminar to make my edits and then save it back in Lightroom. So either way, it's either a RAW file straight from my desktop or a, uh, a TIFF file from uh, Lightroom. And that is tip number one. I just think you'll get more mileage out of your photos. You'll get better results if you do that. So that's one. Okay, number two. I'm going to check my list here so I got them written down, and that is presets. Now in this photo, um, if you aren't familiar with presets, you can just click on that button right there at the top and you'll see that it opens up all these different categories. So there's there's a number of built-in categories, but what I here's what I recommend with presets. I recommend you open your categories. Now I've got some of my own preset packs here, but I recommend you open and let's say I'm going to stick with this outdoor category. You can see the, the name over here on the bottom left. And let's say I choose this colors of the fall and it applies it automatically. You probably already know how a preset works, but here's what I recommend doing, and that is go in and customize the preset because I think it's important. I like presets a lot. I think it's great, and it's wonderful to quickly and easily apply a certain look to your photo, but I think it's important to uh, get your arms around how presets work, and the way to do that is to mess with them once you've added them to your photo. There's nothing wrong with sticking a preset on a photo and just going forward and saying, hey, I'm done, I'm happy, and great. You know, I make preset packs, people buy them and use them for that, at least I assume they do, and I'm grateful. I don't want you to stop buying these things. Um, that's part of how I make my living, but I think it's important if you really want to deeply understand Luminar is to get in there and do these experiments. So maybe you come in here and say, well, it's a little too saturated, so you adjust the saturation down, or you could even add another filter. You could add HSL, and you could come in here and uh, if I can get to HSL, add that, and maybe you say, well, that's too green, so I'm going to take the saturation of the green down a little bit, but maybe I want to bring the blue saturation up a little bit. Maybe I want to add a little more contrast than they've uh, added. Maybe I add you know, another filter like tone or something and come over here and uh, do some tone adjustments with smart tone or something, and I'm kind of making it up, and that's really the point. Um, in order to better understand presets, in fact, I can just close the preset window, I think it's important not just to stick them on your photo and move on, but to get in there, add more filters to them, mess around with it, experiment, see what you can do with it, because that's how I think you'll really understand not just what presets are doing, but more importantly, how these filters are impacting your photo. And I think that's a really big deal in terms of getting the most out of Luminar. Now, the next step, I think, in messing around with presets is to build your own presets. Um, and so you might just come in here and, and have a, uh, you know, let me clear the workspace and just come in here and say, well, I really think I want to use Accent AI, Saturation, Tone, and Vignette. And I'm making this up, so, so don't hold me to this actually looking uh, particularly good. But, you know, maybe you come in here and you say, all right, I got some looks here, and I kind of like where this is going, but, uh, you know, maybe it's a little too saturated, all right? So I'm just kind of winging it, like I said. And you come in here 
and do your thing. It doesn't look bad. I mean, there's the before and there's the after. But if you like this, you just come down here and hit Save Filters Preset, and you can just say, you know, awesome, cool, if I could type, a preset, and you create a new preset. So now you have this awesome, cool preset, and you just click on that. You go into Categories. You go into User Presets, and here's an awesome, cool preset right here. Now, I've got a bunch of other stuff that I'm working on that's uh, stuck in here, so those are kind of immaterial, but you can see here's a different one I built a while back, a great landscape. Maybe I want to use that preset. Bottom, and it looks pretty good on this one. It is a landscape preset, but the bottom line is experiment with those things. Try to build your own, and then the last thing I think that's great is maybe you like this, a great landscape, so you look at it and you say, okay, it's got raw developed, it's got AI, adjustable gradient, maybe you, you make some notes, and this is a lot of stuff to remember, but what I like to do is to go in and say, all right, well, I'm gonna clear this, and then I'm gonna try to create that same look without looking at the preset. So you may not remember all the different filters that are in there, but you know it's gonna be some combination of these things. And then, and I'm getting it wrong because I wasn't paying that close attention, but you come in here and you say, all right, well, I kinda wanna recreate the look of that preset somehow, um, and that's not how, let me tell you. Um, let me see here. Um, it's kind of hard to talk and uh, do this at the same time. But, you know, maybe you come in here and do some experiments and try to create the look of a particular preset by just messing around. And, and I didn't do it here. It's a little too saturated. There's too much blue. So I'd go add HSL to help me with that and uh, close the filter panel there. And I'm going to take that blue saturation down. That's not a recreation of the preset, but the bottom line is experiment with presets, build your own, try to recreate looks, customize presets that you've used to suit your photos, save them as your own with a new name. All that stuff is helpful, and that's really what this tip is all about, is just getting in there, learning how to use presets, building your own, experimenting, because it's really going to help you learn the filters. So that's number two. Okay. Number three is all about workspaces. Now, there's some great workspaces that are built in, right? You've got this landscape workspace, has all these great filters in here that you can come in and apply to your photo and you know do whatever it is uh, that you, you, you may wanna do to your photo. So, uh, and again, I'm just kinda making it up as I go here. Uh, I'm gonna bring that saturation down, it's way too blue, but you know, I just took that um, landscape workspace and I've gone from that to that in no time at all. And while it's not a finished photo, I'm just kind of riffing here, and I didn't use all of the filters that are, excuse me, in this workspace, and you don't have to, right? You might come in here and make some adjustments and decide you don't really like them or something, you know, and that's okay. Um, but the point is, I think workspaces are great, and in fact, I like them so much that I went in and created my own. So I've got a video a while back about uh, a workspace approach where I use these three different workspaces, light, detail, and then color and I stack them on subsequent layers, but they help me come in here and manage the light first, and then I go add details, and then I go adjust colors, and that's kind of how I like to do workspaces here. Um, but, you know, so there's using the light workspace. I've gone from that to that in a couple of clicks, which I think is fast and fun. Um, the point here is not to get you to use my workspaces or even my approach. The point is, I think Workspaces is a great innovation in Luminar, and I use them all the time, right? I've got monochrome ones that I've built that I'm working on. Um, sometimes I'll go in and use some of the workspaces that are in, uh, included in Luminar, but it's a great way to get a common set of filters that you might use on a particular type of photo and get access into, to them quickly. And I think it's one of the cool things about Luminar because I've gotten to where I've built these workspaces that I use for specific functions, not for specific types of photos. And that's just how I like to approach editing. So that works really well for me. But again, huge innovation in Luminar. And I think mastering workspaces is a great way to really dive in. And that's why it's one of the key methods that I think to really become a master of using this software. Okay, now I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna clear workspace. Now, the next one is all about filters. This is tip number four, and that is experiment aggressively with filters. Now there's some that you're gonna use a lot, right? You might use the develop filter, AI tone, right? So AI is a great one, but what I recommend doing is going in here and getting filters that you wouldn't normally use, or maybe you're intimidated by them, or maybe they just seem kind of weird. Um, but so I like to use like color balance and curves and things like that. Um, I recommend trying these things out because, you know, if you get in here and I'm, again, I'm just kind of riffing, um, 
just kind of you know doing some kind of fun stuff here but you might get in here and find that you've developed a look with a particular type of uh, or with a particular filter that you really like and so now that's not really it but uh, for me but the point is these are filters that might be sort of confusing to people so you know color balance might sort of mess you up mentally you might you know and I'm just, again just kind of moving around I don't have a plan on this photo but you know you can do a lot of different things with a lot of different filters um, I recommend getting filters that you're not familiar with or that maybe scare you or intimidate you in some way stick them on a photo there's no harm in trying it out and you never know you know you might get bicolor toning and say well this is kind of weird what does this do well for starters you can get in here and look at some of these presets you can just click on them and add them to your photo and they may or may not be making much of an impact well they won't if i got it at zero um but you know you can come in here and say well i want to try some of these odder sort of different uh kind of looks and you come up with something weird, unique, different, you might come up with something you love. But the point is, and these are just some examples of, of uh, filters that you know might be sort of weird to people, not Accent AI, but some of these other ones. But I think it's an important thing to get in, dive into filters, check them out, see what you can come up with. And that's a uh, tip number four on how to really become comfortable with and master using Luminar. And then tip number five is all about layers. So. You've got this layers functionality here and it gives you so much capability. You can add a texture, you can put a new sky on a photo. Um, you can just do all sorts of things. And with layers, I think masking sort of ties into that because layer masks really sort of are something that I think are fairly commonly used or could be commonly used in Luminar, but they're a very powerful feature. But even if you don't use a layer mask, consider using a filter mask. You might come in here and say, well, I like the sky, but I really want to add denoise to it. So um, instead of putting that on a different layer, you can just stick it on here. And I'm just going to move this pretty high. Uh, and then you can just come in here and on, on a layer, you can grab any filter and filter mask it in specifically. So I'm just going to add this denoise to the sky. Now I've done nothing else to the photo at this point because I'm on the base layer, but I've added denoise there. So now I could go add other filters and add them, you know, just on. Uh, the other parts of the f uh, photo if I wanted, right? So I could come in here and say, well, I just want to add this stuff on, you know, everything but the sky maybe. And then you can mask these two with the filter mask, or you could do these other filters on a different layer and say, I want to add them on a new layer and then mask that layer in, which would be a smarter way to do it if you're going to mask multiple filters on a layer. Um, the point is you have a lot of capability and a lot of functionality and really a lot of flexibility in Luminar. So these are my five tips. The first one is use raw files or TIFF files because you get more mileage out of them. And if you're moving things around and sort of pushing those pixels, you're going to get a lot more give in the photo without creating artifacts and noise. Uh, two is all about presets, right? Create your own, build your own from scratch. Take presets that are already there and experiment with them, move them around, create your own looks, or try to recreate the look of that preset without looking at what the settings were. Maybe you write down the filter names, but then you want to try to recreate the settings. Uh, third is workspaces. Take advantage of the power of workspaces because I think it's a, it's a really neat innovation, and it's something I use a lot when I'm editing my own photos, but it gives you a lot of flexibility to quickly get to filters and start editing without having to say, you know, oh gosh, this is a landscape. What filters do I need? It allows you to quickly get started. The fourth one is filters and grabbing a bunch of different filters, uh, especially ones that you find confusing or odd or just weird or that you haven't gotten good results with. Uh, check out a lot of my videos. I've got a number of filters covered in, in all, most of my videos. Um, but really more than anything, just spend time in there. Just stick a filter on there. See what you come up with and um, see what happens because that's the best way to learn, I think, is by experimenting. And then tip number five is layers and masking. Stick layers on there, do some filter masking or layer masking, add a texture, put a new sky in. And I've got uh, videos about all of that, so I'm not demonstrating all of this in this video as much as talking about it. So those are five tips for getting the most out of Luminar. Hope that you find it helpful. It's an incredibly powerful product. There's so much you can do with it. Just have fun and experiment. That's the best way to learn. Feel free to subscribe to my videos. Leave comments if you've got any questions for me and uh, share with your friends, that sort of thing. I really appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by today. I appreciate you taking the time to watch and um, I'll see you next time. This was five tips for getting the most out of Luminar and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks again, friends and adios.